Hello, epic viewers from around the multiverse. We're ready to bask in unprecedented glory because today we're going to be reviewing the SDCC 2018 Diamond Select Toys Marvel Select Action Figure Reveals. So as you guys unequivocally know, Diamond Select Toys is notorious for churning out state-of-the-art, robust, intricate, high-quality, stellar figures of your favorite Marvel characters. And unlike Hasbro Marvel Legends, these action figures are not shoddy, they're not chintzy, they're not sheer and utter rubbish. They actually warrant their somewhat affordable price points of um, $25 or more. So, as you guys can unequivocally see, unless you lack a modicum of visual prowess, we have a figurine of Rogue that's donning the 1990s Jim Lee attire. She also comes with us. She also seemingly comes with multiple pairs of interchangeable hands, so that's beneficial and that's a boon to action figure collectors. Why? Because she has more latitude for dynamic possibility. You could pose her with open hands or fisted hands, or perhaps even semi-clenched hands if she comes with three sets of hands. Now, she also comes with a diorama of the danger room that has a sentry or turret mounted to the wall. Let me just remove the um, moniker of the channel's name, and you can unequivocally see how there's a sentry or turret. And you can role play that is pelting lasers at the X Men or discharge and blast at the X-Men as they undergo their um, danger room simulation. So it's great that we have a miniature danger room or a section of the danger room. Um, this rogue action figure coincides Emily well with a seven inch action figure collection. Um, she has a high quality sculpt. Her aesthetics, details, textures, hues, design, And um, overall value is um, high quality to say the least. So let's uh, move on. This rogue action figure is practically impeccable, and um, I would concede to buying her for um, $10. At the moment, I can vindicate the $25 price point because I'm a destitute, indigent peasant, but I apologize about the digression. However, if you're wealthy, affluent, and live a posh, luxurious lifestyle, then consider integrating her into your collection. Even if she costs $25, she warrants every penny. Next, we have a figurine of um, Captain America. He's um, apparently sporting his... Avengers 3 or Avengers Infinity War attire and um, he's not wearing a mask or a cow or anything that obscures his face. I'm not too much of a fan of um, the unmasked version but it is unique. His shield is disparate from um, his previous version. It looks more medieval, and it looks like it's derived from a time of antiquity rather than being something um, a bit more modernized. He doesn't seem to come with interchangeable hands, however he may when he's released, but um, he definitely has phenomenal nitty-gritty details. He truly emulates Captain America's movie appearance. Um, what else? He seems to have more of a vacant facial expression. He has more of a neutral look. I'm not too much of a fan of that. Would have been nice if he came with an interchangeable head. His um, base, his stand, is not too spectacular to say the least. It's bland and um, boring. There's nothing um, aesthetically appealing, but it's nice that he comes with that. Um, it truly embellishes the um, 
purchase. And if you're looking to add sprawls of land to your um, action figure displays, if you're looking to um, add in more artificial ground comprised of hunks of plastic, then you may want to leverage this um, base or the stand that's quite hefty relative to a typical standard run the mill conventional action figure stand. So I also dread the fact that he has open hands. He looks like he's about to karate chop someone and cleave them and lacerate them. And he doesn't look like he's truly poised for battle. He just kind of has a he kind of has this dull expression, this vacant expression, and um, it's not a very appealing figure, so there's nothing that I would purchase. Maybe for five dollars I'd take heat in purchasing it, but um, for more than that I just can't justify purchasing it, even if I were a billionaire and not destitute. Next we have um, Thor. He may be donning his Ragnarok attire. I think he is, because if he wasn't, then he'd likely be utilizing the um, eye patch. But um, he definitely has a majestic, grandiose appearance. Um, I don't like the Marvel Cinematic Universe appearances of my favorite superhero characters. I prefer um, a comic-esque appearance. I prefer a appearance that's more fictitious and more unrealistic. So, again, he embodies a likeness of his actor and um, if you're a die-hard Thor fan, if you're an avid, devout Marvel fan, and if you love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and if you want another variant of Thor, then you could pick him up, but he seems to be a pass for me. Even if he came with an arsenal of weapons, even if he came with a grandiose diorama piece, even if he came with um, interchangeable hands, and um, additional accessories, I would still forgo buying him. He just doesn't really offer that much. I have the Marvel Legends Series 3 Thor, and I may have other Thors, but um, that's good enough for me. Moving on, we have the Teenage Groot. Nothing too um, riveting about this figure. Um, the Doll Groot figure is superior in every facet. Um, I don't really like the scrawny, dainty design of um, the Teenage Groot. I understand that he's um, cultivating and um, he's in the midst of growing and attaining his full adult height, but there's no need to have a teenage version of um, a behemoth of a character. I'll just pass on that. And even if his price was slashed in half, even if, even if it was cut in half to twelve fifty, I would still abstain from buying it. I would still as to buying variants of characters that I already have. So these are just inferior versions of um, characters I already have. Next we have Iron Spider. They did churn out an Iron Spider figurine in um, 2006, I believe, after Toy Biz became defunct and after Hasbro took up the reins of the Marvel Legends license, but um, his movie appearance is not as appealing as um, the appearance of the translucent Iron Spider action figure from um, the latter half of the 2000s. Sure, his appearance is a novelty, but um, it just looks to June and a bit um, basic and um, elementary. When I see it, even though it's unique, it just doesn't look like it's meant for adults. It looks too um, kid-friendly, to say the least. It doesn't look 
dark, nor um, gritty, nor um, ineffably epic. The color schemes don't mesh too well. And um, there's no need for Spider-Man to be sporting armor. I think it'd be epic if you were wearing chainmail, like Lord of the Rings character. And if he had more than four tentacles protruding out of his back. But um, I'm just not too much of a fan of um, the layout of blue, yellow, and um, red color schemes with this current design. I think that the red is too overpowering in this design. And the yellow is too subtle. And the blue just looks out of place. It's not even on his forearm, it's on his upper arm, and it's enwrapped around his um, thighs. The design is just truly uncanny, and it's not very aesthetically appealing, so I wouldn't get it even if it was $12. For five, I'd probably um, consider buying it, just because it's unique and novel, but a novelty isn't enough to um, get me to relinquish my money on a variant of a figure that I already have. So, I also wanted to point out that um, there were reveals of um, Star Trek figures and Diamond Select Toys also flaunted their um, upcoming Pacific Rim action figures, their upcoming Kingdom Hearts figures, and their upcoming Ghostbusters figures at um, SDCC 2018. But um, we do have some new Marvel figures that have been revealed this year, and um, Beast is also slated to be released in the pending future. So, I guess you could say um, the main, I'm just trying to contemplate how to word this subsequent sentence that I'll spew from my vocal folds. The main appeal of um, this SDCC convention was um, Rogue being inducted into um, the Marvel Select action figure line. Furthermore, it was also eye candy to take a gander at those King of Hearts figures the Star Trek figures, the Pacific Rim figures, the Ghostbusters figures, and um, other Diamond Toys figures in person. So, based on um, their reveals and SDCC 2018 and based on what they have to offer in the pending future. When you take all this into account and you amalgamate the um, contents as a whole, when you aggregate everything together and when you say how was Diamond Select Toys performance at SDCC 2018. I'd have to give them um, an 8 out of 10. Why? Uh, they're continuing the Kingdom of Hearts line and they're rendering them somewhat affordable so you can army build those figures. They're churning out more Marvel figures so they're continuing that line as well. They're 
creating more Star Trek figures and Pacific Rim figures, as well as Minnie Mae. So they're creating all these desirable figures. I'm deducting some points because they're creating variants of um, characters we already have, rather than being a bit more brazen and creating um, figures of new characters. And um, they're also heavily focusing on creating characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe rather than um, creating more nostalgia characters that um, have not been realized in action figure form. So if there was a de-emphasis on creating figures of Marvel Cinematic Universe characters and um, there was a de-emphasis on creating more variants and um, they were able to um, lower their price point to under $25 and I'd have to give them um, a 10 out of 10 because they've hit it on those cylinders but because the prices are um, somewhat expensive and because um, they continue to make variants of figures we already have and because they're making realistic figures that emulate the appearances of the actors instead of their comic book counterparts, I'm going to deduct points and give them an 8 out of 10. The sculpts, the details, the shadings, the hues, the textures, the paint applications, the designs, accessories are eminently stellar to say the least. But um, I just prefer the action figures were more comic guess. So I love this rogue and she should exemplify everything that Diamond Select Toy should produce in the future when um, expanding upon their renowned, illustrious Marvel Select action figure line. So she should, in other words, she should serve as a role model for um, future molds that should embody a comic book appearance of the character and not a movie based appearance, so 8 out of 10, that's my final quantitative score for um, their reveals, their performance as SDCC 2018, and for um, what they have to offer as a totality, and when you um, weigh the value against the price, you're still left with 8 out of 10 if you were to buy everything that um, they churn out. It wouldn't be... Um, the quintessential p purchase, but it would have a tremendous amount of merit. Because even those figures that are undesirable are still highly intricate and are characterized by um, impeccability. So, I hope that you found this video to be intriguing and insightful. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. Goodbye.